The air was black with smoke from hundreds of fires ablaze in the fields, engulfing houses and barns. The smell of gunpowder from muskets and cannons choked our lungs. Worst of all was the reek of the unburied dead whose bodies were festering in the hot August sun. Nothing could prepare us, even those of us more accustomed to blood and amputations, to the horrors of men wandering aimlessly with arms blown away or screaming in pain on the ground, clutching for a leg that no longer existed. Among the sights that made me nauseous was an encounter I had with a young lad, probably 10 years of age, who was most likely a drummer boy. Gone was his drum and sticks, and gone was his right hand. In truth, it was almost gone. It dangled by his side, attached to a thin strip of skin above his wrist. He made no cries, most likely being in shock. But he looked directly into my eyes, unmistakably pleading for me to do something. At first, I was paralyzed by the ugly horror of what had happened to this mere child, caught up in an adult conflict and in a cause he could barely have understood. Forcing myself out of my stupor to attend to his profound need, I sat him down in the dirt, opened my satchel of instruments, and seized my amputation knife, distracting him by pointing to the battle raging far to the side, I quickly severed the skin that was holding his dangling right hand and threw it out of sight. Still, he made no cry. I bandaged the stump, gave him a drink of water, and told him to remain where he was and that I would return for him. Hours later, I did return to the spot where I thought I had left him. He was gone.